the Coaches Outreach family. This is part two of our video series for the month of June. And we have asked Gary and Wendy Kramer, longtime supporters and friends of Coaches Outreach and friends of mine as well, to uh, do a little study in the Song of Solomon to help strengthen your marriage right here. They're going to talk about the little foxes that spoil the vine. Uh, I know it'll be helpful to you. So, again, we're praying for you. We look forward to seeing you. Enjoy. Hi, we're John and Ashley Broom in Sunnyvale. I uh, just wanted to talk to you guys about um, our experience uh, during quarantine. Uh, we have four daughters, and uh, we've really gotten to spend a whole lot of time with them, and uh, we certainly have enjoyed that quality time. Yeah, we, um, like you said, you know, all of us, all six of us stuck in the house, you know, has really actually been a blessing. Um, just lots of quality time mm -hmm. all around. We uh, get a chance to uh, have a lot of family time together and uh, play board games and old school games, hide and seek. Uh, and that's, you know, just certainly a whole lot of fun. Yeah, and the girls have gotten to bond with each other. You know, the sounds that we hear coming from through the walls of their rooms when they're having that bonding time is just a real joy, mm -hmm. real joy to hear them mm -hmm. bonding together. We've also had a chance to uh, eat three meals together every day, uh, which is, you know, not normal for us. And that's uh, really been a lot of fun. And uh, we've certainly enjoyed that. And then there's homeschooling, which has been a new experience for all of us. And I really think that, you know, the girls, you know, they're doing a great job. And, and I've learned as much from them as, as they have from me. So uh, we just uh, hope you guys are doing well and uh, hope you're enjoying your experience at home uh, with your kiddos. And uh, see you later. Bye. Well, hey, coaching couples. So we're Gary and Wendy Kramer. Uh, we've been married now some 36 years, and it's a great privilege to come into your home uh, from our home. Uh, we're honored to be asked by Coaches Outreach to be a part of your life today. Uh, we love the ministry of Coaches Outreach. We love the fact that, that uh, they take you to the Word of God because we believe that in swirling times where everything is flying around you, that there's nothing more important than anchoring your life and your marriage to truth. And we know this, that uh, this book is truth uh, as it's presented by the one who designed us, made us, put his fingerprints all over us. For the bulk of our lives, we've spent it investing in coaches and athletes, equipping them to do life well off the field so they can maximize their performance on the field. And so that's what we get to do today uh, with you. Uh, today, I want to take you to Song of Solomon. Chapter 1, uh, beginning in verse 2, where Solomon's fiance, they're, this is before they get married, and Solomon's fiance describes their relationship like this. May he kiss me with the kisses of his mouth, for your love is better than wine. Now we could go on, read some more, but the fact of the matter, what I want you to see there in chapter 1 is that their relationship is at that wonderment stage. Try to remember back to the wonderment stage where that other person couldn't do anything wrong that would cause you not to just be Google-eyed, chasing after them and pursuing them. That's where they are. She says that our relationship is intoxicating. It's, it's better than wine, better than the best wine. I love it when he kisses me because it just brings up all the wonderment of our relationship together. In chapter 2, though, we come across Solomon speaking back to her and talking back to her. Um, and in chapter 2, verse 15, he realizes that that, that wonderment can, can fade away if we don't pay attention to some things in our relationship. And here's how he said it in verse 15. He says, Catch the foxes for us, the little foxes that are ruining the vineyards. Catch them while our vineyards are in blossom." If you had the, the opportunity to know my father, you would know that he has a passion for gardening. A passion for uh, growing and harvesting things. In fact, as a kid, I remember my mom's countertops in the kitchen being completely covered with these little potted plants from Burpee. 
uh, where my dad would have seedlings on the counter with lights that would cause them to sprout. And this is about February or March. And for a month and a half, we would have just our kitchen covered uh, with plants that began to sprout. And so my dad loved the garden from scratch. And one of the things he still loves growing is strawberries. And whenever we call him, we get a strawberry report from my dad. And he even has a name for his garden. It's Gary's Berries, whoever he shares them with. So we tease him about Gary's Berries. How is Gary's Berries doing today, Dad? So it's just kind of kind of fun. Gary's Berries has become world famous in our family. And uh, But one of the crises that Gary's Berries experienced was one year the chipmunks were getting into his strawberries. And so it became a regular routine that whenever I would call my father, uh, I would get a chipmunk update, how many he had trapped, how many plants he had saved, how many strawberries he had harvested. It became a personal challenge between my father and the chipmunks as to who was going to be victorious. <laughs> and so I think, I think that's what Solomon's talking about here. Uh, if we said it another way, he'd say, how do we keep the, keep the chipmunks out of the strawberry patch? How do we keep the little foxes from destroying the vineyard? And one of the things that Wendy and I kicked around on this whole thing was uh, we think is very important and we've tried to do from the beginning of our marriage, haven't always been successful at it, um, but, but it is in, in how we guard our words, in how we use our tongue. And so I know from my life and her life and especially our life together, uh, we, learned, we learned that positively and negatively from our own families. Yes. Um, back before we got married, um, we, right before, right before we got married, my mom, um, was struggling with breast cancer and passed away. And so we got to grieve together with my family through that time. And there was one evening when my dad was just kind of broke down and it was just Gary and I there and we just enwrapped him in our arms and, and he just kind of was disheveled and he was a big old guy, six foot six, and he just came to pieces. And he basically said, gosh, I wish I could take back all those words, all those things that didn't build her up. And that made such an impression on us as, you know, three weeks from uh, marriage, that that was one of the things we talked about afterwards is I grieved and he grieved and, and we worked through those things um, in those, that first year of marriage and second year of marriage and beyond, that was one of the things we said. We wanted to, we wanted to be really careful about our words. We wanted to be intentional with our words so that um, we, we would carefully discuss things and um, we would work hard at not tearing someone down, not tearing that person down. Because, mm -hmm. you know, we know each other well and we know the buttons to push, right? And so um, there were even times we had to step away and just walk away and, and not talk about the issue that was at hand and we're very different um very much in love and very much on each other's team but very different and so i remember as a young bride uh climbing into bed just stewing mad you know he should know i'm mad about this and boy i'm gonna give him the cold shoulder and within three minutes he's asleep he had no idea that i was even upset and so through those first, you know, first months of marriage, I learned that I needed to open up and I, then I needed to learn how to share what I was feeling with him um, in a way that didn't tear him down. And he learned the same thing about me, but that took really opening up to each other and, and talking about and, and guarding our words as we discussed the issues in our marriage. And so that was just made such an impression in us. And I really think through the years that has helped us because those words, you know, if you just, if you just push them under the rug, that rug's going to get really, you know, it's, it's going to, it's going to build and you're just going to have to start stepping over those places in the rug. Right. And, um, if you can just take care of those things, and then move past those things and then determine you're going to you're going to be really intentional. You know that that's an active word. Um, intentional isn't passive. You have to be ahead of your tongue, right? You have to catch it and you have to be aware of it so that you don't tear your tear your that precious relationship that God has given you down, but you build it up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's not only the words we do say, it's the words we don't say sometimes, you know. I think in Proverbs 12, 18, the scripture says uh, the tongue can pierce a heart like a sword uh, or it can wisely used bring healing 
uh, to a person's life. And so I think, yeah, it's some of the things, it's what we say. And, and in our relationship, probably like some of you, you know, I tend to be the guy who has the gift of quick, short responses. Like off the cuff, I'm, I'm really good. What I need to think better about are the ramifications of what I said days later. Because what I found about this girl is that two or three days later, after she's thought about what I said, she comes back with an incredible response. Like I go, yeah, you're right. And we could have saved ourselves a lot of grief most times by just simply guarding our words and making sure that we were using them to build each other up. But I also think it's the words we don't say, honey. Mm -hmm. I think it's the things that we take for granted that we don't do. Uh, the things that we did early on are even the things we do with other people. Yes. Um, and I'm thinking along the tar terms of just the little things in daily life that that the mundane things that we would call them that we can show appreciation and gratefulness for um, you know I, I was we were kicking this around and I thought you know what if what if my clothes didn't get washed what if uh, she didn't vacuum the dust bunnies uh, from out and under the bed what if um, you know, our, our bathroom, we have little rugs in our bathroom. What if she never washed us? Because you know what? I don't see that stuff. And I, I guess I probably don't see it. I would see it if it didn't get done. But you know, God has just allowed me to start to notice those things and then to tell you how much I appreciate the little things um, that you do. Just even a simple thing like saying thank you. Yes. Just appreciating each other, I think, is so important. Uh, we do that all the time with other people. We we build them up, we intentionally thank them, we, um, you know, if, if we're really good at with those people skills, we know how to, um, to alleviate a, um, what could be a bad situation by just starting out with, thank you very much for coming to me about this, right? Those kinds of things, we're so good at that with other people, but sometimes between the two of us, we, we think they know how we feel but we need to intentionally there's that word again make sure that and and genuinely um respond to that person and thank them for the things that they do for us every day and um it's just you know builds them builds that person up and and makes them know that they're appreciated and loved um and it just takes that intentionality again of doing that with your words yeah um, sometimes we don't even know the words we use. We, we are thinking things that uh, we don't understand why they, that person is responding a certain way. There's a funny little example that um, I'll share um, with you. Early in our marriage when our kids were really little, I was, I'm a teacher, but I had taken a couple years off from teaching and was home. And um, so I was letting my kids do things all day long. You can do this and you can do, I'll let you do this. Mommy will let you do this. Well, Gary would get home and there would be this, right, just tons of things that hadn't gotten done. And so after dinner or whatever, I would let him fold the clothes for me. I would bring a basket to him. Like he didn't have to get it out of the, out of the dryer, but I would bring it to him, him and lay it at his feet, right? And I would let him do that. Mm. Well, he just didn't respond like I thought he should. He just bristled and just, this went on. This just sort of went on in our, and I just was like, I, I don't understand. So one evening, of course, we decided to, I decided that I needed to broach this subject that was really getting under my skin. It was a little fox. It was a little fox. It was a little chipmunk. It was yeah. a little fox. Yeah, strawberries, yeah. Okay. And so it, I don't even know that he knew why he bristled, but, um, it was definitely noticeable. So um, we got to talking and chatting. He goes, you know what I think it is, hon? It's that you don't ask me to help you, but you let me do that. So I feel like a kid. And I was like, oh my gosh, do I do that? And so it's been a joke in our marriage now because I sometimes slip and, hey, I'll let you do, and I'll catch myself because, you know, it's a silly little word, like you really should have, come on, right? But. It's funny how those words set us off, right? It's actually <laughs> ridiculous that, that I felt thought like that. You know what I'm saying? I mean, but it's those little things that the enemy uses and wedges in our relationship. That just didn't set well with me. I just felt like, you know what? I don't need another mother. 
Uh, I had a mom and have a mom. <laughs> and I, I, I married a woman to be my teammate. And I am not, I, you know, I don't need you to let me do anything. I don't need permission for this. Uh, <laughs> silly, silly. But it's those little things that really do kick our butt. Uh, and that kind of leads to another one that we talked about a little bit. And that's uh, as much as choosing our words carefully and, and being grateful and building up and those kind of things is, is just uh, mutually respecting one another. Um, you know, in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 21, uh, before Paul talks about husbands loving their wives and wives respecting their husbands, he says in 521 that we are to mutually respect one another. Subject yourselves one to another. And, and I think mutual respect is a big deal, that I value uh, what she thinks, that I value who she is, that she's not just somebody that's tagging along on the ride that I'm taking, or I'm not just somebody tagging along on the ride that she's taking, but that we're on this journey together. And that as I go, we go. And as she goes, I go. And so that means I listen to her. And you know, a lot of times in coaching, we're all the times giving out and telling everybody what we want. And, and I think mutual respect, one of the biggest aspects of mutual respect is, is just dialing it down and being able to listen to each other. Um, and respecting, even when we don't agree, um, respecting one's opinion and one's view yes. uh, of a certain issue. And I think, um, I think that goes a long way. Um, you know, you think back about when you were dating and think back about, again, when like Solomon and his fiance are talking about that time of wonderment. Man, I could have listened to her all day. You know, your old country song, I want to talk about me, I want to talk about mine, I want to talk about... We could listen to each other all day long and that was just great. Um, and, and I think that mutual respect just is, is a lot about listening and, and respecting one another. It's about, um, it's doing the things I used to do. Uh, it's doing the things I would do for each other. I would open the door for somebody to go through the door. I would, you know, back in the day I would, and I still do, I'd pull out the chair for her. I would open the car door for her, right? And so those are the things I used to do and we used to do to, to demonstrate that mutual respect. And then all of a sudden we get married and, and those little things kind of, well, you know, she can open her own door, right? Or, and then we wonder why she doesn't like slide over to the middle anymore. So we wonder why she's not like, you know, running her hands through your hair like she used to. And I think it's those, that little mutual respect. And so I, I try to remind myself that I want to treat her the way that I would demand that someone else treat her. Now mutual respect means that I really care about what you think. It uh, means that I hear you out. And it means that I, uh, even in times when we disagree, we disagree agreeably. Um, I think that's important. Um, and so um, mutual respect has gone a long way in keeping the little foxes out of our garden, I think. Yes. Um, don't you agree? But, agree. but but we also know what it's like to blow it. <laughs> right? <laughs> foxes sneak in. We're, we're not sitting here. Yeah, they get in there and eat some more strawberries. You know. Uh, and so what do we do when we do that? And, you know, like, she, like Wendy said, the best thing is to address it right then. I, th I love 1 John 1, 9 because he, it's written to believers. Uh, and it says, uh, if we confess our sin, he's faithful and just to forgive our sin and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Uh, you know, following Christ doesn't mean we're going to be perfect. Um, and I'm glad that John the Apostle recorded for us uh, how we should address those things when they do come uh, to pass. And so he simply says, hey, when you screw up, get together, agree before God that we blew it. And then go to one another, ask forgiveness of each other. Forgiveness is not just saying I'm sorry. Forgiveness is saying, you know what? I screwed up. I blew it. I'm taking ownership and I need you to forgive me. And I think that's a huge part. Uh, we've never just been happy to say I'm sorry. Although that's the easier thing to say. Isn't it? I mean, because I can say I'm sorry and really not say I'm guilty. <laughs> I'm just sorry you feel that way. Uh, I think when I say I, I need you to forgive me, um, that just says, boom, right here I'm taking the blame. And then forgiveness. Forgiveness is, here's another thing. Forgiveness is not really even me asking you for it. You can forgive me long before I ask you, can't you? Mm -hmm. And that's really what forgiveness is. An act. It's an act, an intentional act, and it's not forgetting. Like sometimes those words you can't forget. Like there's probably things I've said or that, that, that you or somebody said to you that you'll never forget. But I think forgiveness means that, not that I forget what someone said or someone did to me or disrespected me, but I think forgiveness is when I choose not to remember it. 
Mm -hmm. uh, that's what the scripture says about God himself, that he chooses not to remember my sin. And that simply means he doesn't hold it against me anymore. He lets it go and uh, doesn't view me through that lens anymore. And I think that's the beauty of forgiveness is that we, we let those go. I don't, I don't hold Wendy to those words anymore. I don't hold Wendy to that, that bad experience we had anymore. I, I let that go and I choose not to hold that against her yes. uh, any longer. And so I think as we go through life together, 36 years together, I can tell you, when, when you get to 36, you'll have a lot of stories to tell too. Mm -hmm. uh, you probably already do. But uh, I would simply say those things would be key um, in making sure the little foxes stay out of the vineyard. So in closing, we're going to leave you with a couple of questions. Because remember how we said when we started out? Your foxes might be a little different than ours. Um, your foxes might look different than ours. But here's what I want you to do and take some time to do. We want you as a couple, uh, as a coaching family, because we believe that, that as a coaching couple, you've been called by God to represent him to a world who needs to see what love looks like, uh, what respect looks like, what forgiveness looks like, what gratefulness looks like. We believe that the best view of our world getting to see God is through this thing called marriage. And that's really the focus of Ephesians chapter 5, that the world would see him through us. And we think there's no greater platform than that of a coach um, and, and, and their spouse. Whether you're a female coach or a male coach, we think the greatest ex exhibition is to let your players and let your other coaches see Christ through how you treat each other. And so we want you to think for just a few moments, are, what are some of the little foxes that try the hardest to sneak into your garden? Yeah, yeah. So that's first thing. Second thing is I want you to think about some of your foxes that you know and then how you've effectively kept them out of your garden. Okay, uh, how you've done that, how you've managed those foxes, because it's a constant deal. And if, if we don't constantly, even 36 years later, if we're not aware of the foxes that can get in our garden, in our vineyard, yes. they'll get in. So celebrate the successes. Absolutely. Right? Even the small ones, right? Those, some, those are the most important ones. Those are wins. And you know, stupid laundry basket win, right? <laughs> okay, that was a good one. So, um, Anyway. All yes. right. Hey, we're going to let you go before she tells any more <laughs> stories about me. Uh, we love you guys. Uh, we are proud of what you do. Thank you for being on the front lines. Uh, thanks most of all for pursuing to want to have the best marriage that you could ever have.